Hi everybody and big welcome to a CD8 deck tech video but also something of a card review for Sauron the Dark Lord. The 6 mana Grixis commander from Lord of the Rings. So he is a red, black, blue and 3 generic total of 6 mana legendary creature avatar horror. 7-6 with ward sacrifice on a legendary artifact or a legendary creature. So he is a little bit annoying to actually get rid of. He has some form of protection. Now, whenever an opponent casts a spell, a mass orcs one. This means that you're going to grow an army eventually. So in that regard, he behaves a little bit like a heuristic study as you're gaining some value. Like the CDH format currently is very heavily on casting spells. So you're going to amass a lot of triggers here and your army usually gets pretty big. And then whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. So the ring has a few effects. So whenever the ring tempts you, you may attach it first to a creature that is you're going to be your ring bearer. The first ability here means that your creature gains Skulk and becomes legendary. Whenever your ring bearer attacks, draw a card, then discard a card. That is kind of good. Whenever your ring bearer becomes blocked, that opponent have to sacrifice a creature in the turn, something like a death touch. And the last one, when your ring bearer deals combat damage to a player, each opponent loses free life. So there is something, but it's not a huge like power effect. But it's like Skulk and attack and draw a card is kind of but that isn't the big thing with Sauron. You see, the last ability, whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand if you do draw four cards. So suddenly he becomes like a semi-windfall, like for your own per personal windfall. No, you're not wheeling your opponents. This is a good thing, by the way. We're discarding our entire hand and gaining four new cards. That's good. Like if you're building a deck that is dumping your hand really fast. Like imagine a huge punch of rituals. Just ritual Sauron directly into play. Get him into play as fast as you can. It's possible to get him into play something like a turn two, turn three, kind of consistently, and sometimes even turn one. Then you're gonna pass turn, amass an army really quickly, probably good, and then attack with that army, connect to someone, and rest refill your entire hand. That is actually kind of good. And once again, like a turn to Sauron isn't like that impossible. Like, if the plan is to refill the entire hand with Sauron, then you could use Lion's Eye Diamond to get him into play. The CDH format can offer you a lot of various rituals and fast mana. And if you build your deck with enough high rates you off them, then you can quite secure securely have this guy consistently hitting the field and consistently creating that wheel effect for you. So if your goal is to build a deck that's just gonna slam Sauron consistently every single match, then that is uh, somewhat possible inside Grixis. That takes us to the next step. The, what are we gonna do with that? Well, simply reanimation. If you're able to discard your hand quite efficiently, then you can just discard your Rasaket, your Villis, or something really big that you wanna reanimate. And just bring it into play with either reanimate or animate dead or any other effect. We even actually made a combo explained for the Hoarding Broodlord and Saw in Half. Link up in the corner or in the description below of the video if you want to take a look at how to execute that combo. And this is a perfect combo for this commander actually as you could just reanimate the dragon. Remember that Lion's Diamond that we used to get our commander into play? But now it's in the grave. That's perfect because eventually as we're fueling the graveyard we're drawing eventually into Underworld Breach, and then with Brain Freeze, Lion's Diamond and Underworld Breach, well, you have a combo. That will mill yourself out, mill out all of your opponents, and then you just cast a Wheel of Fortune from your graveyard, or cast your Fastest Oracle, and boom, you win the game. Speaking of which, this is in Demir Colors, so obviously we could go for Fastest Consult as well. Grixis these days are just literally building themselves. I mean, we have a lot of staples cards like Praetor's Grasp, Gamble, the Harnfell Horn... Necropotence, Notion Thief, Jagmoth's Will, don't forget that. You want to feed your graveyard and you want to Jagmoth's Will and now you've turned your entire grave into your hand. Birgi, Darth Voidwalker, and don't forget your Orcish Bowmaster. We want to amass that uh, Orc army. Actually, this is here for interaction. People want to board wipe and people want to wheel. And we want to board wipe when they wheel. Don't forget Dress Down. Pretty good versus tax effect. Annoying creatures you want to remove when you want to win the game. 
This is also a card I really want to highlight. Mnemonic Betrayal or Meme Betrayal, pretty good. Or I should probably say that it's good when you're playing against mirror matchups, when you're playing against opponents with the same kind of strategy that are also fueling their graveyard and are playing the same cards you're playing. Because this could be like a Yawgmoth's Will when your opponents have been fed a little bit more than you. Now the big thing is that you have free opponents, that means free, free graveyards, so usually the chance of this being able to perform a win con compared to Jogmoth's Will is usually easier. However, you don't really control how much cards are being put into your opponent's graveyard until you Wheel of Forge them, so to say, or well, when they Wheel of Fortune. People are usually fueling their graveyards in this kind of Grixis style, so if you're playing against a, like a Grixis matchup, then this is definitely a card to auto-include. Also, if you're not really playing a Grixis strategy yourself, you're playing something like Demir, but you're playing against a lot of decks that I'm showcasing like this. Like, Meme Betrayal is very good versus Sauron, so to say. Because Sauron is automatically just gonna put, as we talked about, cards into the grave, and then you're sitting with a Meme Betrayal in your hand, and in a perfect timing window, just play that and you utilize everything he has tossed away to make that into your hand. The deck we've looked at today is brought to us by Pontus. He named it Voldemort. And he has played this deck on our gameplay channel. You can take a look at that if you want to see how it's performing in action. Now he isn't going for the reanimator style because he's going for the Adnos style instead. And I can actually agree with that quite a lot. You don't really need to play the reanimator package, so to say, because you're already on a form of reanimator strategy anyways, because you have the, where is it? The Yawgmoth's Will? There it is. And you have your Underworld Breach. So you're basically just fueling your graveyard and utilizing these two effects in some form of way. And they have a lower CMC, which means an ancient an Adnasium will be great. He does have Bola Citadel in the deck though. But of course there are other options. This is from Samurai Dance, the Lord of the Rings, Sauron deck with Vilis and Rasakef. Obviously also on Underworld Breach, but he is not, he is actually playing Ad Nauseam. You can still do that. That's brave. But Necromancy, Animate Dead, and Reanimate as well. Because Reanimate and Villis is pretty good. Thank you so much for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed the video. Sauron as Grixis is a new very expensive commander that is very similar to Aura. He's very different from other commanders, but in the end Grixis is very similar. Grixis decks usually become the same thing over and over, but with different commanders the Grixis playstyle will differ. In any case guys, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Take care everybody.